So we finally have some dates as to when we're going to start seeing professional sports live on TV again. As well, the country is really starting to open back up. More and more people are going back to work. So does this mean that the stock rally for the stay-at-home stocks is over and dead? I'm going to talk about all of that coming up next. Hello everyone, my name is Paul Zachary Shelton Jr. and I'm the Chief Investment Officer of Warwick Shore Advisors. We are a wealth and investment management firm located in Orlando, Florida with clients all across the United States. If this is your first time coming to my channel, I ask that you please hit the subscribe button, please like this video, please share this video to help me increase the financial literacy of our globe. Before I get into today's topic, I wanna to offer up to you a free financial plan and cheat sheet. This cheat sheet will help you build your financial plan together, put everything together that you need. It'll give you a snapshot of your financial health as it is currently today, as well as I'll throw in a free asset allocation that you can use to invest in today's current market environment. So let's go ahead and talk about today's topic. Really wanna dive into it and, and see if the stay at home stock rally is over or if there's still some more steam left to it. Let's talk about what happened today in the market before we get to that. The futures market was met with volatility this morning ahead of Trump's speech. Many feared that tensions between the U.S. and China are ramping up, which is a risk that the market had not factored in. After dropping more than 250 points during the middle of the trading session, the Dow closed lower by just seven basis points, which is roughly flat for the day. However, the S&P 500 was up nearly one half of a percent. For the month of May, the Dow had rose a little over 3%, so did the S&P 500, and both indices are down 11.06% and 5.7% respectively on the Dow and the S&P 500. Trump did not announce sanctions on Chinese financial institutions or any Chinese senior officials, which would have been more of a tense gesture potentially leading to a snag in the stockings of the current trade agreement between the U.S. and China. Seven out of the 11 S&P 500 sectors were up today with healthcare and technology leading the way. During the middle of the week, there was a rotation away from the stay-at-home stocks and a shift towards stocks more value-oriented sectors and more areas of the economy that are starting to trade based on economics as opposed to free money. The international markets are not left out of this fund that we're having in the market either. This chart shows the, MSI, the MSCI All Country World Index has climbed 33% from its March lows. This is something that I expected as the international markets were first to see a reopening of their economy so they were first to get back to have some more economic activity drive in their economy as well one peculiar thing that is noted about this chart is that the data shows that the rise in international stocks was done while money flowed out of equity funds about 120 billion dollars flowed out of equities now flowed out of stocks since february a big part of this is that many investors have covered their short positions and are no longer short global equities. A divergence that you see in this chart is typically not seen, um, as you can tell by this chart, dating all the way back to 2003. There was a similar dislocation back in 2012 um, when cash flowed back into equities in 2013, the market pushed higher back to the highs before the Great Recession. It is very, very possible that new cash flows into equities will be needed to push the stock market higher in the face of dismal economic data. The difference between 2013 and now is that the employment and overall economic picture in this economy had recovered when those new cash flows lifted equities. As of now, unemployment is a long way away from recovering and the overall economic picture in this economy is not primed to provide a quick recovery. Additionally, the savings rate in this country has increased significantly 
hitting a record high 33% as more and more Americans stockpile cash and curb spending in the wake of the coronavirus. The increase in savings came as spending declined by a record of 13.6% for the month. The previous record savings rate was 17.3% also back in May, but back in 1975. Although saving is healthy from a personal finance standpoint, a significant increase in savings will hurt the economy in multiple ways. First, there is less economic activity transacting, which continues to muffle the employment situation. Second, with the lower amount of confidence regarding personal economic security, investors will shy away from investing and providing liquidity to the financial markets. Lastly, with the first two situations playing out, the government will be forced to bridge the gap in spending by inflating the economy with more stimulus money, which can potentially crowd out personal and business investment. So given the recent economic data that we have seen come out in our market this week, I do believe that as the economy opens back up, we just got an approval in the state of Florida for Disney World to open back up on July 11th. We also see that the NBA is looking to start a season on July 31st to finish off a playoff. Um, the same is true with the NHL and other organizations as well as other companies all around the economy and all around the country. As this continues to take place and more people are out on the roads driving and more people are heading back to work, I'm starting to feel that those stay at home stocks will start to lose some of its luster. If you look at Zoom, Zoom, when it really took off, it was met with a lot of competition from other companies that flooded the market to offer other outlets to be able to allow employees and businesses to communicate across their streams. We saw Microsoft Teams, we saw with Google and so many other platforms out there. So that kind of added a lot of supply to a short-lived um, demand that was there. Very possible that we're gonna see a pullback, maybe not significant because there will be some tailwinds for the market if we see additional cash going to equities. But if not, there could be some pullback in those stay-at-home stocks. Additionally, those other additional stocks like Netflix that saw a nice rise up when the stay-at-home order was put into place also saw a rise in competition with that. Hulu was already in the mix. Disney Plus was already in the mix and coming out, but they really, really stocked up and caused a lot of competition for Netflix. It's very possible that as people are going back to work and not everyone is going to be home sitting on the couch from nine to five during the day watching movies that those stocks will start to diminish in quality a little bit and see a little weakness in those areas. And lastly, as more and more Americans are going back to work and there is a greater global demand for energy, I really believe that a sector that is gonna really shine will be the energy sector. We saw a 90% increase in crude oil over the month of May. I believe this is something that's gonna to continue to happen throughout the rest of the summer as the country continues to open back up. Additionally, with all of the economic stimulus money that has been poured into our economy, the possibility of inflation is very, very present in the next 18 months. If this does play out and if we do see some sort of infl inflation rise in our economy, more than likely this inflation will be seen in the energy sector. And as we begin to fly more airplanes, as we, as we begin to put more cruises out there, more boats out there, and there's more consumption of crude oil, more consumption of gas, this will be one sector that is primed to do well. And I further believe that this will be one sector where most of the companies within it will regain and start repaying out their dividends. So if you're one of those dividend investors that I've been talking about all week on this channel, this may be a sector for you to focus on and to take a quick look at to maintain some of the yield and income in your portfolio. If this is your first time coming to my channel, I ask that you please hit the subscribe button. Please like this video. Please share this video to help me increase the financial literacy of our globe. Thank you so much and have a great day.